Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, labor trafficking. Also, a do-nothing parole board. And the Medical Cannabis Commission releases license. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. What could go wrong with that? A lot. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, columnist and investigative reporter at APR. Hello. Hi. Hey. Well, the Cannabis Commission finally awarded <laughs> five integrator license hmm. earlier this week. And this is what I have determined is real reefer madness, Josh. (laughs) Because the five companies that they chose, Sustainable Alabama, True Leaf, Wagon Trail, Flower Wood, and Specialty Medical Products of Alabama, Mm -hmm. all had some very wild scoring, as did the other 30-something. And it made no sense. None the way they handled this. And the big question is, is anybody ever going to go to jail? <laughs> Probably. Uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, you know, it, it is, it's, to look at this process, and then, you know, because they released the the little voting sheet uh, that showed how everybody voted. And, and so to have a company that is your top scoring company, and across the line at the top, there would be, you know, somebody voted them one, somebody, I think, three, another one, four. Then there was like a 29 or so, you know, and, and, the fact that there was no discussion about that, you know, about why this person felt like not only were they not one, they were one of the worst companies on the sheet, you know? Yeah. Why? Why did you feel that way? You were a commissioner and there was there was that there was no discussion among the commissioners about this issue was a public discussion, at least. Right. I, I obviously feel like there was probably some private discussions, but which are, would be illegal. But I, I mean, it it just it calls into kind of question what what you've done with this whole process. Yeah. And Susan, you know, we looked at uh, all these companies mm-hmm. and compared them to mm-hmm. the statutes. And one of these companies has got a license, mm-hmm. has civil lawsuits, which part of the statute is you cannot have lawsuits against you. Mm-hmm. Well, to tell you how disjointed the commission is, three of the commissioners didn't show up to vote. They're just done with it. I mean, you know, so, it's just, I mean, yeah. what are we doing, man? It, 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 honestly, what are we doing? Yeah. One of these companies, I've seen the pictures of their facility. It is a high tunnel, for which you guys don't know. It's it, High tunnel is just, you know, protected from frost of the plants. Uh, that's probably 20 years old. Our greenhouse is more high tech than that thing. Well, and one of the things, and we wrote about this this past week too, mm-hmm. is that according to statute, they are required by law mm-hmm. to inspect every facility prior, prior. to issuing a license. That's course, the word in the law. Prior. prior. Now they've said that they're not issuing the right, yeah. They're yeah. issuing. They're awarding. They're awarding it. Awarding. Then they're going to issue it later. Yeah. They issue it yeah. after they make these uh, these uh, uh, inspections. Yes. Now the one thing that Susan pointed out is they disqualified mm-hmm. all the other applicants. What, yep. is, what is what is that? Nobody I, I knows. I don't understand what 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 happened. Was there a was there a conversation about this? They point? voted to disqualify. They That's it. Disqualify. So if they go to a site that is basically a dirt patch, uh-huh. they go to a site that's got uh, powdery mildew all over and and, and it's mm-hmm. been infected before. Who are they going to replace them with? So are we not going to have that license? Well, we that's not? what we don't understand. Why, and what was the what was the the quali- what? How did you get disqualified? We don't. I, we just, don't know. They and just nobody disqualified has answered. them on mass. Just the rest of you, you're out. Yeah, and they took a vote and said we're disqualifying everyone else. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? 
I, I don't, I, I mean, seriously, I, I don't, I get what there's, okay, I can, I can in some ways go along with our, listen, we're, we're awarding the license because we can't visit all 90 applicants. Okay. And as they, they claim that's what they would have had to have done. They, yeah. We can't do that. All right. So, so all right, all right, that's fine. If you want to do that, we'll, we'll say it. But then to, to disqualify everybody else, right. I, I don't, for what purpose? I, I think you just end up back in more lawsuits. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I've asked, and, and I haven't received an answer yet, is who is going to verify that you went mm. and actually inspected these well, facilities? A selfie that, won't do it. I'm sorry. That ha that, that's got to be public. That's, that's a public, <laughs> that's a public meeting. If, if you're gathering uh, as, a, as a body to go and inspect these facilities, that's a public meeting. There, there are suspicions out there that they're going to send one commissioner to each site. Hmm. Now, I think in the interest of transparency, whoever they send, you need to send at least a small gaggle yeah. of reporters yes. yeah. who can document what actually is mm -hmm. on that site. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't trust them any no. more than I, you know. Well, haven't haven't there been some some of the companies that have invited media to their yes. to their yes. facilities? Yes. Yes, and so have. so why it obviously it can't be that big of a deal to you know, to, to invite them. I mean, don't show them the security stuff. I mean, I, don't I, give them the door code. Right. Yeah, but at least yeah, let yeah. the media show up. I mean, you've got to have a building, yeah, and it's got to be functional, and and it's got to have be yeah. more than a slab or a dirt patch, as yes. right. calls it. But we don't know that they have those, and they don't know that they have those, and yet they have no backup plan for what to do if mm -hmm. they go out there. And I can tell you this: from what I've seen so far of the boats and the way they've handled this, that my dog knows more about a greenhouse or any kind of facility like this than they do. I can tell you right now, they don't know the difference between a greenhouse, a hoop house, and a high tunnel. It's obvious. Mm. So what are they gonna even know what they're looking at when they go? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I talked to uh, one of the, well, actually a couple of the scientists for, you know, somebody right. that, that yeah, worked yeah. with a lot of these yeah. companies. And, you know, and they talked about what kind of goes into this process. And, and you're talking, because we're not just talking about growing weed here, no, okay? I no, mean, we're, we're, we're talking about growing medical grade right. uh, marijuana that is used in medicines, and it has to meet a certain standard, and those standards are spelled out. And when you do it, you have you, you can't use regular pesticides. Right. Right? No. You can't use a lot of the things that would be available to you if you were growing other types of plants and things because of you know the, those qualifications that have to come in. And and so. I just I don't have a lot of faith that they they've, they've and done this. And one of the biggest things with growing marijuana, or any great American marijuana for that matter, is you can't it cannot have mold. And you and I garden, we know how easily things contract powdery mildew. Yeah. And if you if you produce that and people you know yeah. inhale powdery mildew, they're going to get sick. In fact, some people have died because of well, it. Well, I mean, this has to be in a clean environment mm. that's highly regulated because, yeah. as Josh said, this is. Medicine, yes, mm -hmm. and it has to be done right. It's going to some of the sickest people in, in the country. Exactly. Absolutely, exactly, yeah. absolutely. You well, gotta go ahead and kill them. Now. Yeah. And, and, you don't and, have the right kind of stuff. Right now, there stands so many questions that I don't see how this doesn't yeah. get relitigated <laughs> course, again. Yeah. Anyway, we have to leave it right there. You're watching the V, the Voice of Alabama Politics. We'll be right back. There seems to be a new wave of aggressive driving lately. You see those people, they are the ones that are tailgating other people because they have to get through their destination now. Weaving in and out of traffic looks like they could care less about who's around them. There's no one else on the roadway. They're the only one there. Aggressive driving can be the difference between life and death. All because somebody thought they needed to be the front of the line and get there first. Slow down. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Your home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. 
So don't wait. Sign up for React today and protect your home. Protect your home with React. Sign up today. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, a lawsuit has been filed against the state of Alabama for basically uh, labor trafficking, where the Department of Corrections is renting out uh, folks from the prisons to do work at some of the fast food restaurants and other places like that. They get paid a wage, but then the the state garnishes that wage. And so they're being sued because what they're doing, they say, is basically slave labor mm -hmm. or a type of slave labor mm -hmm. where they're pimping these people out to work and they're but they're not letting them keep their pay. And 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 that's just weird that they're doing that. It is me. weird. What makes it even more weird is that they're also alleging that they're delaying their parole in order to keep them in these programs so that the state of Alabama can still benefit from their wages. In fact, so bad, you know, we, we did that parole change back, parole board change back in 2015. Yeah. It led to a 40% reduction in work release inmates. But these people, Josh, are going to work every day at fast food restaurants, basically making minimum wage, but they, they're okay to go to work, mm -hmm. but they have to report back to prison but they're not okay to get parole, right? Oh, you naive white people. <laughs> this is what we call convict leasing. All right? yes. it's, been a, it's been happening in this state for a lot of years. Yeah. And so we're just now doing it a, little bit, a bit more blatantly or assigning a different name to it. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is something that we've written about uh, a lot of times. Um, it's um, it's abhorrent. It's, um, it, it's a terrible practice. It's something that... Uh, you have taken these people, and there are documented cases of this, of people who have achieved pretty much every benchmark that they're supposed to achieve. See, what, a lot of people don't understand what the parole board stuff. All right, it's not just a decision that somebody can make. Right. We have a worksheet right. that tells people who should get paroled. All right, And if you achieve above a certain level, you're supposed to be paroled. Well, they're denying those people parole. And we can go, we've got the sheets. We can show people how they've scored on these things and know that they're above the level. And yet they're still keeping them in there because these people are some of our best earners. All yeah. right. These are some of our best earners that we're sending out every day with very little. They get up every day and there's very little monitoring. Uh, no, they leave, they go to work, they return to a place where nobody really checks on them that much. But they can't make a full wage and go out and live a life because we're keeping them in this system because we're making $450 million a year off of yeah. tax. And that's part of the suit. They mm -hmm. want that yeah. money to go back to those incarcerated people yes. who made them. As it should. Yes. This is it, this is old South mm -hmm. the way we used yeah. to do it. When we would lease it. You know, Slavery is what it is. Yeah, the, well, yes. the way we used to do it after Reconstruction yeah, was, you know, exactly. we incarcerated black people and we sold them back, in essence, to the slave yes. owners. Yes. And they just had to pay the state. Yeah. And so the, I, you, and you, you didn't mention, but the, also as part of this lawsuit, they're suing the, the companies who are oh, participating yeah. in this mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And it's some of the bigger fast food chains, McDonald's, KFC, yeah. Burger King. All these, these people are participating in this. And... You know, I think it ought to start getting a little more attention that they, these people are participating in essentially slave labor. Yeah. The first time I ever heard of this was about 20 years ago when I was talking, Susan and I were talking to some judge friends of ours <coughs> and they said, oh, well, we don't, we don't, you know, we, we don't go to fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. We're like, why? And they said, because so many of the people that we put in jail are working there. Mm -hmm. and we're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's because that's how they... You know, yes. they put them to work out there. Yeah. So. yeah, so you never know what's gonna be in your food when yeah. you get it. Uh, and it's, but it's, <laughs> it's so, it's such a terrible, terrible way to make a profit. You know, and that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. It's somewhere along the lines, somebody in the, in the executive office of these companies have said, "Ooh, let's participate in this program here through the state, where we essentially stock our roles with." Slave labor, yeah. uh, prison labor, the, a convict leasing. Yeah. The thing is, in Alabama prisons, it costs the prison, it costs the ADOC about $36 a day 
for prisoner. Mm -hmm. All right, now, I'm sorry, but, and it's a terrible situation they live in, <coughs> but where is this money going if it's not going to $36 a day to take care of them? Yeah, I, so, yeah, exactly. Where are we spending money? Right. Yeah, where's it going? And and the thing is, this goes back it partially to this whole parole board situation mm -hmm. when Steve Marshall had his his person mm -hmm. take over in pardons and paroles, yep. and she has kept thousands of people that are due release yep. from being released. No other reason, in my opinion, mm -hmm. than they want to prove how tough Marshall is on crime right. so he can be governor, the yeah, next right. governor of Alabama. And it's just like Josh said. These people, they've ticked all the boxes. They're ex you know extraordinary uh uh, inmates and whatever, and they're still holding them, and yeah, that's just not. Right. There, there, there are worksheets where the actual guards that, that oversee these people have said, "Yeah, they, they, they've they've achieved everything. Yeah. They, they help us here. They help us control the population. They, we're, they're a benefit to to our society in here, and they would be outside of here. They they should be released. I, and we we've turned them down. Yeah, and and Chris England, Representative Chris yeah. England from. Mm -hmm. Tuscaloosa has year after year brought something forward mm -hmm. that had bipartisan support that said we need an oversight of the parole board and make them follow their own rules. So yeah. They don't even follow the no. guidelines, rules that they're charged with. Yeah. Right. And therefore, they do need an oversight body. There's yeah. got to be something to, to intervene in, in these activities and say that this is not right. And then we've got to revise right. the way the pardons and paroles well, actually work. if... If they're not going to do it, if the Republicans in, in, in our legislature are not going to do it, then I would encourage the Democrats to do it without them. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to set up a commission that's going to have any teeth, but you can set up one where you force these people to give you the documents that you need and you can expose to the public and you can send out a report every year or every six months, however long you want to do it, and, and expose what, what's going on here. And I've talked to Republican lawmakers who understand the need for this, yes. but they also do not want to... Uh, appear weak and lo liberal or woke. Right. One of the smartest, toughest judges I've ever known, Representative Jim Hill, mm -hmm. has said we need something yeah. similar to this and we need to change this. But somebody said, oh, Jim just become a big old liberal. Yeah. I'm like, but, when? But when? out of the other side of their mouth, yeah. they don't want to pay for prisons that are yeah. overcrowded. Well, well it it, it, you're choosing not to be, not to appear weak or whatever, but instead choosing to look like a dipshit. Exactly. I, I mean, really. Well, can you say that I on TV? I think you can. Just okay. Me. All right. Just you're sorry. watching The V where Josh says whatever he wants to on television. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Today, Montgomery is a safer city. It's time to shift the narrative and take control of our future. We're reopening community centers, remediating blight, and revitalizing neighborhoods across the city. And we're unleashing new opportunities. Over the past year, companies have invested a record setting $2 billion in Montgomery and created 2,000 jobs. This is a new Montgomery. And together, we're reimagining the possibilities. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, uh, tis the season uh, to be jolly, uh, they say, and to be giving mm -hmm. and to care about our fellow humans. Uh, Governor Kay Ivey this week, this past week, awarded $46 million for heating and, and some cooling for uh, the least fortunate among us. Mm -hmm. Of course, those are federal dollars that mm. the state's given. So to Joe Biden. But, but, right, but, you know, we can't say that because, see, then, <laughs> you know, Sleepy Joe, Demented Joe, whatever, Joe. Seems like you're doing a pretty good job. Joe. Joe doing a good job. Yeah. 
But anyway, I was thinking about how, you know, a a lot of people complain about what government can't do and what it Mm -hmm. can do. And again, this is a drop in the bucket of Mm -hmm. human suffering, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Sure it is. All through history, working against greed and poverty and these types of terrible human conditions have we've not improved a whole heck of a lot. We get better and then we get worse. We get better, we get worse. But I thought, isn't it nice at least it's a little bit Mm -hmm. of a happy story for a season that's supposed to be primarily about giving. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, it's not a lot, but it's like my old buddy Leo Tolstoy used to say, but then shall we do? I mean, you know, we got to do something, right? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is. You know, since I'm on a roll here, you can tell you what pisses me off. Is um, that Go for it, Josh. Uh, when when we have something like this, the immediate response for a lot of people, even people on the lower side of the income scale, will think about, oh well, it's a giveaway program to people that are, you know. At the same time, whenever there is a tax break or a giveaway for a corporation somewhere, and we think, oh, what a what a great job, you know, how smart are they to beat the tax? The, the former president, how smart was he to beat the tax code? Yeah. You know. And, but whenever we make progress, whenever we have something that lifts people up from the bottom and, and we, we think of it in a different way, and when the exact opposite has been shown to be true here in this, every time we have focused on the bottom in this country, it has been a boom to the economy, yeah. all the way from yeah. the bottom to the top, every single time. Ever since, I'll tell you this, ever since Ronald Reagan was in office, we have had a, a deficit for most presidents except for three. And uh, you can probably guess which party they're from and, and what the policies were. And now I'm not advocating for necessarily for Democrats, although Democrats have a lot of policies that I like. Yeah. But if we focused on these more and on the top less, we're going to lift from the bottom up and it's going to be better for everybody. Well, we and, had and, the and, fa- and, Go ahead. And to your point, those same people that say these are giveaway programs, mm-hmm. I wonder if they cashed those tax rebates they got from the state of Alabama. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, did they deposit those over the last couple of weeks? Yeah. Did they call that a giveaway program? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and again, I, the point I was thinking here, and you're both of you are absolutely right, is that our charitable institutions mm-hmm. do not do no. enough. No, no, they can't. They cannot do they can't. it. Yeah. Uh, and the state has to do something to help. Well, yeah, we're we're upside down. We all really right, are. we we're we're upside down at this point in time. The the distribution of wealth throughout the country is at uh, really at a kind of a tipping point. And if we don't figure out some ways to do uh, do better in this, I think that's the reason why you've seen the rise of unions of late. Because a lot of people mm. have recognized we've got to fi- we got to fix this and in a hurry. And this is not fair. What's taking place is is not fair. And so I think that's one of the things that we're starting to see. And hopefully. <laughs> It'll catch on, and and we'll we'll get some uh, some better policy. Well, I see myself as a capitalist, but I also see myself as you cannot be really uh, in my heart. Mm-hmm. You cannot be a uh, uh, just a cold blooded calculus on capitalism. It has to have some give sure. and take. This country is based a lot on capitalism. Democratic socialism. But it also is based on a lot of socialism. It's, it's democratic that, socialism. I mean, it's, it's, it's what has always worked. I mean, from, from the GI Bill um, to, you know, the, the New Deal to, I mean, look at all these programs <coughs> that, that came along that started at the bottom yeah. and, and how, follow, just follow the economy. Don't listen to me. Go back and look at the numbers, you know? Well, the thing is, if we don't give everybody a leg up mm-hmm. or, you know, we're not trying to give them a handout. We're trying to give them a leg up. Yeah. We don't help people get a leg up. We're going to have so many people that are down that society collapses mm-hmm. as a whole. It doesn't matter to me if it's socialism or not. This is compassion. Now, yeah, I was raised in the country. If you had a neighbor that didn't have heat, mm-hmm. didn't have heat, didn't have wood, then you and your buddies went and you cut the wood and you took it over there and you stacked it for them. Yeah. But, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people aren't, aren't yeah. in areas where their neighbors can take care of them. In fact, sometimes their neighbors just as bad off as them. Yeah. This is simple compassion for human <coughs> beings, um, you know, like ours, like us. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. and, and and this goes right into the next thing, Josh. I know you won't have much to say about this, but <laughs> the state has been fiscally irresponsible for not expanding Medicaid, mm-hmm. and the reason they haven't, of course, is because it was 
Obama, yeah, and then they didn't want that. I mean, Eisenhower, a Republican, was the first one, and Republicans were the first one to come up with national health services, mm -hmm. just like they have in England. But it got batted down. So now we we have an opportunity after almost two decades, mm -hmm. right, of this working to expand it, but we won't again because it's a talking point. It's not a. So. It's not even smart. Well, we we and we got a humanitarian crisis here mm -hmm. in Alabama mm -hmm. with over three hundred thousand people without health care. Yeah, it's it's it's. Yeah. Look, and I, it's kind of like the 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 marijuana thing that we've talked about earlier, where we're acting like we're you know creating something new here. We've right. discovered fire when thirty eight other states have already discovered the same fire. And it's the same way with Medicaid expansion. Yeah. We have the numbers. We see what's going on with them. We know what what could be done. And you're right. It this was a program. This was so this was not socialist medicine that we're talking about here. All right. That, that, that's what we wanted. All right. That's what people like me wanted. We wanted a socialized healthcare system in the country like they have in other countries, which, by the way, they love so much that they did a tribute to it at the Olympics when it was in <laughs> London. OK. All right. But that's not what we had. No. It was never going to pass. And so Obamacare was essentially the program that came from the Heritage Foundation. This was something that they proposed that Mitt Romney implemented in Massachusetts. And this was a program that Republicans were behind until the black president. Yeah, offered it up, and now we can't have it. But remember, you got to remember: for every dollar that Alabama spends in opening Medicaid, you get two dollars and seventy-five cents back. Can you imagine what that two dollars and seventy-five cents coming from the federal government could actually do to the economy of Alabama, it, including reopening eight rural hospitals that have closed, all the PPEs, all the new nurses, all the new doctors? It'll probably do about the same as that forty-six million will do for a few families that actually need yeah. heat. And and cool, and this is this is stupidity in the name of bad policy. Exactly, you know. it, is. it is. But anyway, we have to leave it right there. You've been watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.